In the lead up to World Cup 2010, South Africa has been catapulted into mega structure mayhem and is, right now, the world's biggest building site. Explosive experts, tunnelers and engineers are working together to build airports, bridges and Africa's biggest transport project, a high-speed underground railway. Can all of this be ready for 2010? This is the build-up to the cup. Johannesburg, South Africa, the African continent's largest city, covering an area of 1,600 square kilometers. It's part of a province called Gauteng, the local word for place of gold. A reminder that not long ago, 40% of the world's gold reserves were mined underneath this growing region. Johannesburg is expecting an invasion. Soccer fans from all over the planet will be arriving for the world's biggest sporting event. Work on the stadium throughout the country will soon be underway. Now the challenge is to transport millions of people in and out of cities, fast. The footy fanatics must be moved as quickly as possible from Africa's biggest airport, Oliver Tambo International, into the central business district of Santon. Right now, there is no suitable public transport to solve the problem. The solution? The world's top railway builders have joined forces to design Africa's first high-tech railway, the How Train, or Golden Train. With a route of 80 kilometers, this mega project is costing $3.5 billion, and the Golden Train is the biggest railway initiative ever undertaken on the African continent. It will be the most extensive urban intrusion to date, with 10 brand new stations, including one of the world's deepest and will involve tunnelling through some of the planet's most unstable rock. Infamous for flooding and sinkholes. The first phase of the Hau train was fast-tracked with a World Cup on the horizon. Can they be ready on time? It's a punishing deadline. The Howe Train project leader is Jack van der Merwe, a man who has worked on major engineering projects in Africa for years. To complete the network of tunnels, bridges and tracks that will carry the Howe Train, Jack has put together a mammoth workforce. We have at the moment uh, between 10 and 11,000 workers on site at any given time and it's interesting to note we work on 65 sites simultaneously. To help make it all happen, Jack has pulled in experts from 26 different countries. The man heading up the construction is Ian Toms. He has spent the last 30 years on mega railways. The time I actually came here to South Africa, specifically to build the Hull train, it was, it was the challenge. Um, the route length, the, um, the physical challenges, um, and also all the other challenges associated with doing something which hasn't been done here before. The multinational team will work together in some of the worst tunnelling conditions around. Worldwide, tunnelling on this scale has an unfortunate death toll of one person per kilometre. With 15 kilometres planned for Howe Train, this is risky business. There's too much risk, so if there's a fatality there, the health and safety guys walk in and close down the site. The geology in this area is treacherous. Cavernous dolomite underneath parts of the route is a major worry for everyone on the team. Working around, over and through the unpredictable dolomite will be a constant battle. The train's route will connect Johannesburg's major business districts travelling above and below the ground at speeds of up to 160 kilometres an hour. With millions of soccer fans expected in 2010, the section of the railway connecting the central business area of Santon to OR Tambo will be in high demand. Work has started at the airport station. OR Tambo is expecting big things, a brand new train and, for the first time ever in Africa, the arrival of the Airbus A380.
600 kilometers away near the coastal city of Durban, residents are waking up to the sound of bulldozers instead of birds. Work has begun to turn this dust bowl into the King Sharka Airport. It is one of only five airports in the world to be built from the ground up in the last decade. When an airport or other project is established and upgraded, it's called a brownfield development. When an airport is built from scratch, it is called a greenfield development. This one is called King Sharka, in honour of the most famous Zulu chief of all time. Sean van der Falk is the man in charge of making this airport take off. He is the project manager who has made it his personal mission to build King Shaka in record time. Life, wife, children. Over the next 33 months, um, they are going to take a bit of a backseat in the whole operation. But um, you know, unfortunately, it's my it's my job to deliver this this airport, and yes, I am totally committed to doing so. The job: build 400,000 square meters of runway and taxiways. That's the equivalent of 100 football fields another 27 football fields worth of terminal area, move 5.8 million square metres of earth, enough to fill 25,000 Olympic swimming pools and lay 50 Olympic swimming pools worth of concrete. This is possibly the largest building project that, uh, that is happening in this country at the time, next to Car Train. So yes, it's something that we haven't tackled before, but uh, we will most certainly deliver on it. The countdown to kick-off is looming. Two airports and one fast train equal three mega projects, all racing towards the same finishing line, 2010. Back in Johannesburg, the How Train project is blasting ahead. Several stations on the train's route will feature impressive structures above and below the ground. Work is beginning at Park Station in central Johannesburg shortly. Before tunnelling in the area can begin, the site must be cleared, and this means levelling some buildings to make way for the station. Jack and his team have done their homework. There's potential for sinkholes, and the public is kept well back. Three hundred and fifty kilograms of explosives do their job, and gravity does the rest. To meet the deadlines, construction on this site and the tunnelling below it must begin soon. The team swing into action to clear away the debris. Jack's crew is ready to go underground. But in some places, tunnelling is not an option. The dolomite is like Swiss cheese. It's full of air pockets and prone to crumbling. Blasting through it can cause giant sinkholes, swallowing everything in their wake. This could mean a major disaster in the middle of the city. There have been some very spectacular sinkholes um, which have occurred in South Africa where uh, even houses have disappeared down into the bowels of the earth. Geotechnical engineer Ron Kluczek and his rockers have the formidable task of fixing this problem created by Mother Nature millions of years ago. In the area of the Dolomites with the potential for sinkholes, a risk analysis had to be carried out. And if one had to found on this material, you can see extremely soft in comparison to the hard rock. The route was divided into various sections where the risk was defined as either low, medium or high. In the areas of, of higher risk, the viaducts were employed as a means to bridge over the area. These viaducts or bridges are being built to carry the how train over rivers and highways. There are more than 10 kilometres of them to be built before this project is over. The viaducts are made up of massive concrete segments placed on top of support pillars. All the segments are cast at the Howe train's own concrete yard. It is the largest precast facility in the southern hemisphere. Each huge viaduct piece weighs between 45 and 65 tons. 
Each viaduct is different depending on its location. Today the location for the Howe train tunnelling team is downtown Johannesburg. They are preparing to blast. Plastic explosives should do the job. After creating a cavern called a portal to get the construction crew underground, the team are ready to drill and blast their way underneath the city. Setting the explosives into the rock takes skill and the help of the three boom jumbo drill. It has brains and brawn. Computer technology makes sure that the supersized drill bits penetrate the rock to accurately determine the size and shape of the tunnel. It costs around 750,000 US dollars and every tunneler should have one. Tunneling is a dangerous business. One of the first things installed in the cavity is a refuge unit, an air-conditioned metal pod where workers can access oxygen in case of a collapse. Understanding the geology, the flow of underground water and the potential to cause seismics is all part of the job. Throw in a busy urban environment and you have one of the toughest engineering jobs going. Blasting will continue for the next two years until the network of tunnels is complete. But the drill and blast method can't be used along the entire route. If the geology is just too unstable for blasting, it's time to bring in a mega mole, the TBM, short for tunnel boring machine. If you're shopping for a tunnel borer, this is where you'll find one. Herrenknecht in Germany, a factory that builds some of the biggest machines in the world. Each tunnel borer is purpose built and can only be used once. The machines are like giant earthworms that bore their way through rock and soil, spewing out rubble behind them. What makes a TBM really incredible is that it not only bores through the rock, but leaves a complete watertight tunnel behind it. As the cutter head crushes and grinds through the rock, a huge metallic arm positions concrete segments to form the tunnel. Herrenknecht specialises in breakthrough technology. They make the biggest tunnel borers in the world, including this one that burst its way through the Swiss Alps, and the king of all tunnel borers, the largest TBM ever made, used to bore a Shanghai tunnel. 